evening, family, and welcome to Mount Cavern Missionary Baptist Church, the place. We are so glad that you are here this evening as we have come together uh, to study God's holy and divine word. We thank God for those who are here in the sanctuary, for those who are um, on their way. We thank God for those who will be uh, sharing with us uh, across Facebook and YouTube. We are just excited uh, that the Lord has been good to us and continues to shower down blessings upon us, too numerous for us to even imagine or count. So we are just grateful uh, to be here today to study God's holy and divine word. Let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for all of your grace and all of your mercy. We thank you for uh, this opportunity to be found in the house of prayer one more time. We are uh, just so appreciative to you for all that you've done for us, for every way that you've made for us, for every uh, situation that you've turned around for us, for everything that you have brought us through, for every blessing that you have placed upon us. We thank you. We thank you for last night's laying down. We thank you for this morning's rising. We thank you for health and for strength. We thank you for uh, our golden moments rolling on a little while longer. We ask right now, God, as always, that you would give us a fresh anointing of your spirit, that we can take this, thy word, and rightly divide it and impart it to us an understanding that will help us to be who you're calling us to be. Thank you for those that are here. Thank you for those, and, and we ask traveling grace for those who are on the way. Thank you for those who are watching us across various uh, various platforms and Lord we even thank you and ask you to bless those that feel there is no need for master we cannot know you if we don't know your word it's in the precious powerful promising name of Jesus the Christ we pray amen thank God for all that the Lord has done for us tonight we are going to go back to uh, Matthew chapter 20 and we're going to focus our attention on verse 22, I mean 32, 33, and 34. Matthew chapter 20. We're going to focus our attention on verses 32 through 34. We're going to complete our lesson entitled, Make Some Noise. Make Some Noise. Uh, because the enemy wants to uh, make us quiet. The enemy wants to steal our joy from us. The enemy wants to, wants to steal our excitement wants to steal our zeal, wants to steal our expectations and our dreams and our aspirations. The enemy wants to steal all of that from us and make life a mundane repetition of what happened yesterday will happen today and what happens today is going to happen tomorrow. The enemy wants to uh, cause you and me to be sad all the time and never have anything to look, uh, to look forward to and not realize how blessed we are each day because we are simply lamenting the fact uh, that we are, have gone through uh, the trials and the tribulations that we have gone through. The enemy wants to make us blind to the blessings that God has for us. And we have to decide, we have to make up in our minds, we have to purposely uh, find a way, even in the midst of trials and tribulations, find a way to make some Holy Ghost noise, to make some praise feel noise, to make some noise and let the Lord know that we know he's able to bring us through, to make some noise and let the Lord know that we know he's able to turn it around, to make some noise and let the Lord know that we know he's able to bring us out of it. So tonight we're going to we're going to look at this particular pericope found in verse number 30, starting at verse number 32. And we're going to realize that we have a reason, regardless of what's going on in our lives, regardless of how difficult things may seem, we truly have a reason to make some noise. We're going to use next. We're going to use uh, for our thesis statement the same thesis that we shared with you on last week. We want to share it again on tonight, and it reads as thus. The enemy's job is to make us believe 
that we can never overcome whatever difficulties that we are facing in life. He attempts to depress us and cause us to become comfortable in uncomfortable places. This quote unquote comfort causes us to accept mediocrity, difficulties, and despair as just our lot in life. And instead of looking to overcome these places, we begin to believe that this temporary house has become our permanent home. The believer must understand that it is not the time to sit on our hands, get quiet, or give up when facing difficulties. It's not the time to sit on our hands, get quiet, and give up when we face difficulties. No, that is the time to raise our hand in praise, lift our voices in victory, and focus our eyes on the hills where our help comes. Whatever you are facing now, make some noise and watch God bring you out. So whatever's going on in our lives, it is not the time to sit quietly. It is not the time to give up. It is not the time to throw up the raise the white flag and surrender. That is the time to praise even harder. That is the time to worship even stronger. That is the time to believe even deeper, knowing that if God be for me, then who can be against me? That is the time to know beyond the shadow of doubt that the God that I serve is able to bring me out of whatever situation I may be going through. When things are tough, that's not the time to get quiet. That's the time to get noisy. That's the time to praise louder. That's the time to lift him higher. That's the time to bless him more intently and intensely. That is the time to know and show beyond the shadow of a doubt that I am a child of the king. That is the time to know and to show beyond the shadow of a doubt. If God be for me, then who can be against me? That is the time to know and to show beyond the shadow of a doubt that God didn't bring me this far to lead me by myself. So we find, we find uh, two men who are blind on the side of the road. They're on the side of the road and they hear uh, one day that Jesus was passing by. So they cry out, uh, Master, have mercy on us. Master, have mercy on us. Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus, uh, they, when they started crying and uh, announcing and asking the Master to have mercy on them, the crowd, the multitude rebuked them, told them, be quiet. Hold your peace. Uh, be quiet. Don't mess with the master. Be quiet. Uh, you, you, you don't deserve to come out where you are. Be quiet. You got to stay in the situation that you're in. But instead of being quiet, they got loud. Because somebody knows that, 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 that when the enemy tells you to quit, you got to get a little bit louder and you got to get a little bit more rambunctious and you got to believe a little harder and you got to fight a little more deeper. You got to, you got to give a little, bit, a, little, a little bit more. When the enemy tells you to get quiet, just get louder. They got louder. And they said, Master, Lord, thy son of David, David, have mercy on us. And that leads us to where we will focus our attention tonight. We will focus our attention tonight. We're going to first look at verses uh, 32 and 33. Matthew chapter, 30, uh, chapter 20, verses 32 and 33. And we're going to be reading tonight from the King James Version. I'm not the King James, but the New International Version of the Bible. Uh, Matthew chapter 20, verses 32 and 33. Jesus stopped. They had called him in verse 31. And in verse 32, he stops. Jesus stopped. Jesus stops 
and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered, we want our sight. There was something about their cry that got the Lord's attention. There was something about their sincerity that got the Lord's attention. There was something about their desperation, their needs, their wants, their praise, even in the midst of their problems, that got the Lord's attention. There was something about these men that got the Lord's attention even above the crowd that was trying to drown them out. You, you do know that even when the crowd tells you you're not worth it, the Lord still sees your worth. Even when the crowd tells you you are nobody, the Lord still sees that you are somebody. Even, even when the crowd says you don't have what it takes, the Lord still knows that you do have what it takes because he knew you before you knew yourself. And, and everything you needed, he gave it to you before you were born. But when you were yet a twinkle in your mother's eye, he gave you everything that you needed to be what God was going to call you to be. Even above the opposition of the crowd, the Lord heard their cry. Don't ever allow the crowd to stop your cry. Don't ever allow the people to thwart your praise. Don't ever don't ever, don't ever allow the worry to kill your worship because your worship, your praise, your cry is what's going to get the Lord's attention. And when nobody else wants you to come, the Lord will say, come on. Amen. The Lord will say, I hear you. The Lord will say, I feel you. The Lord will say, I am available to you. First point. I want us to see tonight next is I want us to see that he is calling. He is calling. He is calling. The Lord calls out to them. Watch this. After they first call to him. The Lord makes himself available to them after they first make themselves available to him. The Lord hears is now uh, available to touch them because they have first touched him. Don't ever think that the Lord doesn't know what you're doing. Don't ever think that the Lord doesn't realize your praise, your sacrifice, your worship, your prayers, how you treat other people, what you do for others. Don't ever think that it goes unnoticed, unnoticed because the Lord notices everything that we do. And there was something about these men's praise that the Lord starts calling them. Why? Because next, your cries gets his attention. Your cries gets his attention. Whatever they said, however they are feeling, whatever's going on in their hearts, in their minds, in their souls, it pierces the heart of the Lord because he turns his attention to them. He recognizes the, unrecon the unrecognizable. He touches the untouchable. He loves the unlovable. He lifts the unliftable. Liftable. He is uh, available to all, even the ones that nobody else wants to be available to. Your cries gets his attention. Don't ever think that your, cry, that your tears are flowing void. The Lord sees them. Your cries gets his attention. Your battles gets his attention. Your frustrations gets his attention. Your habits that you're trying to break, they get his attention. He sees your struggles. He sees your battles. He sees your fights, and they get his attention. And before you know it, he'll be calling. 
before you know it, he'll be standing, waiting for you. Before you know it, he'll be there asking you to come. Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. The master, the master says, uh, the Bible says that Jesus stood still and he called them. And he called them. In other words, he told them, come to me. Now, this is interesting. He tells them to come to him and they are blind. So there's no way that they can that they can physically see where he is. But he tells them to come to him and they are blind. There's no way for them to decipher to, uh, which way to turn because they cannot see. But he calls them to tell them to come to him and they are blind. They can't see him, but they can hear him. Oh, because next, when you can't see his face, just continue to follow his voice. Because his voice will lead you to where he is. I love Jesus. Jesus is so magnificent that he shows us even in the midst of this story. Watch this. He did not heal them before they came. He healed them after they came and the only way they came was by following his voice because they couldn't see his face. He could have just healed them and then told them to come. But no, he says, I want to see how bad you really want it. I want to see how deep and how, and how true your faith is. I want to see if you really believe I can do this for you. I could heal you from over there, but I want you to come here before you get healed because I want to see how bad do you really want it. I don't know who's listening to me tonight, but somebody needs an understanding that the reason why he hadn't done it for you the way you want him to do it for you is because he wants to see how bad you really want it. Are you willing to fight some battles? Are you really to go through up some hills? Are you really to go down in some valleys? Are you willing to follow him even when you can't see him? He's standing there waiting and the whole time he's talking to you, leading you to him even though your eyes are blind. He says, come. And they, Sister Cookie, start walking to him. Blind. With a crowd of folk who didn't want him to get a breakthrough. With a crowd of folk who didn't want him to be set free. With a crowd of folk who didn't want them to be delivered. They had to be able to hear the voice of the master over the voice of the messy. Sometimes you can't hear the voice of the master because you, his voice gets diluted because you're listening to the voice of the messy. But you got to tell the messy, you ain't going to help me. So I'm going to turn your volume down and turn his volume up because I need to hear what the Lord is saying for my life. I've been blind too long. I've been stuck too long. I've been fighting too long. I've been dealing with this habit too long. I've been trying to kick it too long I've been trying to pray. save my family too I ain't got time for messy I'm listening to the master they say I got to hear what the master is saying and I got to focus my attention on the master because even around the master the messy is still present even around salvation seeing is always near. Even around worship, worry is going to be there. They keep their ears in tune on his voice because they wanted to teach you and I in the year 2021 that when you cannot see his face, follow his voice because his voice will never lead you astray. He tells them, he tells them, come. He tells them, come. He tells them, come. He 
calls them and tells them to come where he is. Wow. He could have went where they were. But he says, no, I'm not going to go where you are. I want you to come where I am. Because where I am is better than where you are. See, you've been on the side of the road so long that you think the only place you can be is on the side of the road. And if I come to you on the side of the road, you'll think even with sight that the only place you can be is on the side of the road. So before I change your condition, I got to change your position. Somebody missed that right there. He said, before I change your condition, I got to change your position. So I need you to get up and I'm going to call you and I need you to come to me because I need you to see that you're better than the side of the road. I need you to see that you're more worthy than the side of the road. I need you to see there's more to you than the side of the road. And somebody in here tonight and somebody that's watching me over these airwaves, the devil has tried to make you believe that all you are worthy of is the side of the road. But I come to let you know that the devil is a lie. Life tried to kick you out and put you on the side of the road. People tried to put you on the side of the road. Situations tried to put you on the side of the road. But every time you fell on the side of the road, somebody picked you up. I tell you who it was. It was nothing and nobody but the Lord that picked you up and let you know this may be where you are right now but it will not be where you are later if you keep on believing and trusting and knowing that I am who I am everything will be alright Jesus says come he calls them he calls them in other words he beckons them to come to him. And then Jesus does something uh, that was interesting. Jesus asked them a question. What will ye that I should do unto you? I looked at that, Sister Moses, and I said, now, Jesus had to have known that they were blind because he knows everything about everybody. So Jesus had to have already uh, deciphered that they were blind uh, because even if he didn't know everything about everybody, everybody there knew they were blind. So if everybody there knew they were blind, then Jesus would know they were blind simply by being in the midst of folk that know they're blind. Anybody ever been in a situation where everybody thought they knew something about you? And the fact that everybody thought they knew something about you, there was somebody that wasn't that that didn't know nothing about you, but thought they knew something about you simply because they were around folk who thought they knew something about you. And you looking at them and you say, You don't even know me. They say that don't matter. I know something about you. Because I heard what everybody else said about you. But Jesus. Jesus. Ask them. What do you want me to do? That's it, Lord. You had to already have known. Why would you even ask that question? Why would that even come out of your, why would that query even come out of your mouth? The Lord said, because sometimes people get in a situation so long that when they get an opportunity to come out, they don't believe that they are able to come out. So instead of looking to come out, they just want to be made more comfortable 
in that place that they're in. so long you don't think you deserve to come out of it. You stop looking for any better for yourself. You start believing that this is the only place that life expects me to be. I can never get out of this. Been in it so long. I can never overcome this. Been doing it too long. I can never learn that. I've been, I haven't been going through education for so many years. You see how sometimes we talk ourselves into staying in places that God is trying to take us out of. So that could have been a reality that they would not want to be better. So Jesus says, I can make you better. I can do it for you. But in order for me to do it for you next, you got to know what you want. You got to know what you want for you. See, a lot of us know what people want for us. But do you know what you want for you? A lot of us know what people believe we can do. But do you know what you can do? A lot of us have put stock in other people's opinions of us. But what are your opinions of yourself? A, a lot of us, a lot of us toss and turn, worry about what the next person who really got their own issues are saying about us. But have we ever, have we ever started speaking positively in our own lives? If I were to give you an exercise and ask you to write 10 good things about you and 10 bad things about you, you don't have to raise your hand, just think about it. Who among, among us would have, a diff have more difficulty writing the 10 good than we would the 10 bad? How, how, how often do we focus on the negative? Watch this. Not realizing that as we focus on the negative, all the negative is doing is growing into bigger negatives. Instead of focusing on the positive. Because what you put your attention on is what's going to grow in your life. So you got to know what you want for you. And when you know what you want for you, no devil in hell should be able to stand in the way of you achieving what you want for you. What do you want for you? Do you want a career and not a job? Go get it. What do you want for you? You want a, you want a degree and you've been out of school a long time? Go get it. What do you want for you? You want a better relationship? Go get it. What do you want for you? Because if what you want for you is in tune with what God wants for you, then God will start working with you to bring what you, what you both want for you to reality. So the Lord says, I, I just got to know what you want for you. I just, I just have to know. I just have to know where are you seeing yourself. I just have to know, are you satisfied with being on the side of the street? Or do you want better. You've been calling my name, you got my attention, now what do you want? You done stopped the, you done stopped the caravan, I ain't walking no more, I'm, st I'm standing still, now what do you want? You done made the folk mad, they done started cussing you out, now what do you want? 
You got me over here. Now what do you, don't get me over here and you don't know what you want. Don't get me, don't get, don't get me in your presence and you not know what you want. Don't let me get in the atmosphere and you not know what you want. Don't let my spirit fill the, te fill the temple and you not know what you want. If I'm going to show up, at least know what you want when I get there. That's how some of us, when he gets here, get a breakthrough. And other of us just break. Somebody missed that. You'll get that when you get home. That's why some of us, when he gets here, we get a breakthrough. And others of us just break. Because we're not sure what we want. What do you want? Know what you want for you. Jesus knew they were blind. Jesus knew what they were going through. Jesus knew they had been ostracized. Jesus knew they had been placed on the side of the road because people will only carry you so far. Jesus knew they had been left for dead. Jesus knew they had been left to beg. And he still asked them, what do you want me to do for you? And he did that so that we will know here at Calvary that we need to know what we want for us. Don't ever let somebody else's dreams about you be more important than your own dreams about you. Don't let somebody else's desires for your life be more important than your own desires for your life. Don't live down to somebody else's expectations. Live up to God's expectations. Don't ever say, I can't do it because they said you couldn't do it. Say, I can do it because God said I could do it. And he asked me the other night at Bible study, what do I want? And I know what I want. I want my health back. I want my strength back. I want my joy back. I want my family back. I want my peace back. I want that perfect peace that passes all understanding back. I want to kick this habit that's been uh, trying to kill me for all these years. And it ain't realized that if it ain't killed me by now, it ain't got the power to kill me. Because there's only one that has the power to kill me. And he said, I'm not going to kill you because you got too much that I need for you to do. What do you want? Know what you want. Oh, and they said, what did they say? Somebody just yelled it out. What did they say? When he asked them to catch, what did they say? They said, no, we just want we just want so, We want to see. They knew what they wanted. That's why we were hollering, Lord, because we want to see. That's why we made the people mad, because we wanted to see. That's why we praised you like we did, even though we had a problem, because we want us. That's why we worshiped you instead of worrying, because we want to see, and we know you've got the power to give us what we want. And even if you decide not to give it to us, you are still able. Somebody, you should have just took off running around your house right there because the Lord wanted you to know even if he don't do it, he's able to do it. And somebody can raise your hand and lift the Lord and tell him thank you because even if he doesn't, Lord, I know you are able and that's good enough for me. They said we want our eyes to be open. And notice King James Version say. They said unto him, Lord, so that the people around it didn't get confused and think that they was talking to them. Yeah. So you got to be specific with who you're talking to 
Because folk around you may think they got the power to give you something that they ain't got the power to give you. And you have to say, I don't want you to be confused and think that I'm talking to you because you're sitting to me, or sitting by me on my row. So I just need you to understand. I ain't talking to you, Lord. I need you to understand. I need you to understand that, 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 that I really don't, it don't matter to me what you think about. Lord, I need you, I need you to understand that I'm talking to the one that woke me up this morning, the one that gave me the activities of my limb, the one that is allowing my blood to flow through my veins. I'm talking to the one that's keeping my heart beating in rhythm. I'm talking to the one who laid down, that laid his life down on Friday but picked it up on Sunday. I'm talking to the one that can pick me up and turn me around. Lord, we want our eyes to be open. That's why we're making this noise, Lord, because we know you're able. That's why. We're lifting you in the midst of these folk because, Lord, we know you're able. That's why we're telling you thank you before you even do it, Lord, because we know you are able. That's why we can't sit here and be quiet because, Lord, we know you are able. Verse 34, and then I'm done. Verse 34 says, Jesus had compassion on them touch their eyes. And this is what I like. Immediately. Oh, they received their sight and followed him. See, some, some, some things he does immediately and some things he does after you do something. Come here, Tim Lepers, who had leprosy. Come here. Uh, Lord Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I, okay, I'm going to have mercy on you, but this is what I need you to do. Go show yourself to the priest. And, and as the Bible says, as they went, then they were healed. But not right here, not right here, not right here, not right here. The Lord touched their eyes. They didn't have to go nowhere. They didn't have to blink three times. They didn't have to turn around in circles. They didn't have to, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't have to do three cheers and the holler they didn't have to do none of that when he touched their eyes the bible said immediately that means quicker than quick faster than fast quicker than right now immediately their eyes became open and they could see see you can't get mad when somebody gets an immediate blessing because you have to do something to get your blessing. that just means that's just what you got to do that just means that's just where you are maybe next time you'll get an immediate and i'll have to do some work but however you bless me lord whatever Whatever I got to do, whatever I got to go through, I'm willing to go through it. I'm willing to do it because I know there's a blessing. I wish somebody would holler with my name on it. And it don't matter to me how you bless me, Lord, when you bless me, Lord, where you bless me, Lord, as long as you bless me, I'll be all right. what I want you to see. Then we're done. I'm going to finish early again tonight. Look at the Lord. This is what I want you to see. Next. After he calls you, he lets you know he has what you need. Yeah. Calls you and he lets you know I've got what you need. And the reason why the Lord can give us what we need even when we've been messed up for a long time. Even when we've gone astray for a long time. Even when we have been contrary to his will and his, his wants for a long time. The reason why he can give us what he, we need is because next, the Lord has compassion for your condition. He has compassion for 
your condition. The Lord has compassion. He has love. He recognizes our needs. And our needs does something. Uh, it touches his heart in places that makes him um, willing to do things for us. Watch this, Calvary. Even when we don't deserve it. Watch this. So, Cookie, if the Lord can be compassionate to us, why can't we be compassionate to one another? If, if the Lord can meet our needs and see our needs and give us what we need because of his compassion, why can't we be compassionate towards others? If the Lord can be kind to us when we don't deserve it, why can't we be kind to one another? I was at Sonic a couple of weeks ago. Went to get a strawberry shake. I was going through the line. My strawberry shake, I believe, was three dollars going through the line and I got up to the drive through window and I got ready to pay and the young lady in the window said, that car up there paid for your meal. And I said, oh. And I started looking, I was trying to see if I knew who it was, but by the time she told me the car was already on Garth Road and I said, oh. Nice. And in my mind, so cookie, I'm thinking, why wasn't this the night that I bought <laughs> something for it? <laughs> so what I did, sister honey, is I said, okay, they were nice to me, so I'm going to be nice to the car behind me. I said, okay, what is, I'm going to take care of the car behind me. What is there? She said, they bill is $28.75. I said, all right. All right. I'm going to give 20 When they get up here, tell them they got $8.75 in the bill. The, the, the moral of that story is it, it never hurts to be kind to other people. And, 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 and my kindness to you should have absolutely nothing to do with what you have done for me. All right. My kindness towards you should be there because I am a child Amen. of the Lord. Right. If my Savior can have compassion for these blind men, why can't I have compassion for my brothers and my sisters? Yes, the Lord has compassion on them. And because of his compassion, he touched their eye. He could have spoke. But he touched their eyes. He could have thought it. But he touched their eyes. And that lets me know next, no matter how bad off you are, when people, when everybody else wants to taint you, the Lord will still touch you. When, when everybody else wants to tear you down, the Lord will still build you up. When everybody else wants to destroy you, the Lord will develop you. When everybody else wants to kill you, the Lord will cultivate and create you. When everybody else takes you and says what you can't do, the Lord will touch you and tell you and show you what you can do. They had been blind. The Bible doesn't tell us how long they had been blind. And I believe this is the reason why next, no matter how long you have been in your current situation, the Lord can turn it around immediately. The Lord can turn it around immediately. Sometimes we look at how long we've been in something and we've made how long we've been in it to be the justification for why we stay in it. 
we make how long we've been in it the justification for how long we stay in it. I can never get out of this. I've been doing this for so long. I've been down for so long. The Lord doesn't care how long you've been doing it. The Lord just wants to know when you want it to turn around. When do you want to get out? And this is the final point, and I'm done. The Bible says that after he had compassion, watch this, after he touched them, after they received their sight, then they followed him. After he had compassion, after he touched them, after he restored their sight, then they followed him. Watch this. He had compassion, verb. He touched, verb. He gave them their sight. Verb. Then they followed. Verb. Watch this. After he had compassion, after he touched them, after he gave them the, their sight, then they After the Lord worked, then they worked. After the Lord did, then they did. After the Lord uh, exerted some energy, then they used some energy. After the Lord did something, then they did something. What does that let me know? That lets me know that we can't expect the Lord to do all the work and we just sit. There is something that we should be doing as a result of the blessings that we receive from him. They follow. I want to go where you go. I want to do what you do. I want to know what you know. I want to go where you want me to go. I want to help who you want me to help. I want to touch who you want me to touch. I need to feed who you want me to feed. I need to clothe who you want me to clothe. I need to give water who you want me to give water to. I need to save who you want me to save. I need to bless who you want me to bless. I need to help who you want me to help. I need to heal who you want me to heal. I need to pick up who you want me to pick up. I need to reach out to who you want me to reach out. I I need to cook and feed who you want me to cook and feed for. I need to do what you want me to do because you did what I asked you to do. We all need to follow. And the last thing, I'm done. Last point, next. He will lead you if you follow him. He will lead you if you follow him. Family, make some noise. Whenever life gets you down, whenever it seems like you won't come out, whenever it appears you won't come through, whenever it looks like it's too hard, make some noise. Whenever you don't know if, the, if today is going to be the day, whenever you don't think you're going to break out, whenever you don't think you're going to have a breakthrough, make some noise. And when you hear that Jesus is coming by, just call his name and ask him to have mercy on you because your praise will put him in your presence. And when you get him in your presence, you got to know what you want for you and you let him know what you want. And I got some witnesses in here that can testify. He'll give you what you may not give it to you when you want it, but when you are wanted, when he give it to you, he'll give you what you want. I am a test of living testimony that the Lord is faithful. Family, we love you. We thank God for you. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for your word on tonight. Thank you for allowing us to know that in all times and in all seasons, all situations and all circumstances of life, we have a reason to make some noise and to give you 
some praise and that you will meet us where we are in the midst of what we're going through, not to keep us there, but to make us better, to pick us up and to bring us out. We love you. We thank you for all of your many blessings. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Family, don't forget that each week we ask that you bring $5, $1 for each business day. And you can place it on the altar or if you're at home, in your, in, at your home, on your computer, on your phone, you can go to our website, mcbctheplace.com, and you can give your $5 seed offering. We plant the seed. The Lord will grant the increase. Your $5 seed offering, if you want to go ahead and take care of the whole month, you can do that. Or you can go to our cash app, mcbctheplace, or you can mail it, P.O. Box 2672. Baytown, Texas, 77522. Let us pray for a closing prayer. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We ask right now, Lord, as we say always, that we thank you for allowing us to be here. But as we get ready to leave this place, let us not leave you. Go with us, stand by us, lead us, guide us, and protect us. And as always, we ask, oh God, that you would be between us as we are absent one from another. It's in the powerful, precious, promising name of Jesus, the Christ we pray, and we all say it together, amen. Family, we love you. We thank God for you. We are so glad that you are who you are, and because you are who you are, you have what you have, you do what you do, and you go where you're going, we know that Mount Calvary is and always will be the place.